Do you remember those notepad video tutorials that were playing Trance 09 Sound System Dreamscape song and had a Bandicam logo on top of them? But when you didn't see any logos, this program was working hard behind the scenes. From GMR.com to these crystal clear quality tutorials, let's dig up the past and take a look at, after almost 19 years, presenting Cam Studio, the relic and a monument to golden age of YouTube. What more can I say? One of my first video tutorials were recorded using this program, watching Jimmy Arcom and basically trying to copy what he was doing in his own style. This was the program everybody recommended. When you wanted to use Bandicam, you got the logo, but this program had no logos. In fact, if you wanted, you could have added your own logo, your own little watermark. That alone made you stand out from everybody else. Oh, look, he has his branding. And, and back in the day, people were actually re-uploading your videos. So having that logo told everybody, hey, look, this is not your video. I know who this video belongs to. First, I'm gonna take a little detour from my usual repertoire, repertoire, and... Repertoire. 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 Whatever the fuck it is. One thing with Cam Studio, the version was 2 point something something. There was supposed to be Cam Studio 3, but who knows when that's gonna turn up. There's one interesting thing going on on Wikipedia, malicious software. There have been ongoing reports about malicious code contained in some binaries of the software. As of 10th March 2020, was reported to be infected by 20 out of 70 engines. As of 27th April, the installer offered by the official website was reported as malware by just one out of 79 scanners. So let's see the website. The website to my knowledge, is still the same from long, long time ago. As we can see, there's just a bunch of text, just your old school website. Download the program and there's a little bit of fishy download button, but it actually does what it's supposed to do. They tell you what the program is able to do. Here are just a few ways you can use the software. There's a little testament, I guess. Yeah, but basically, just they're just telling you it has a bunch of options. I would have preferred if it wasn't just text-based, a little bit more images and simple, not so much text, so much explanation, but that's fine. The version that we are going to be using is this one. As you can see, it was released in 2013. And there's a plea for help. I've got big plans for Cam Studio and want to continuously improve it and the codec as well, but I'm not a programmer. Let me showcase you the program, the features, and also the recording process. So the program is actually very simple. You have a couple of buttons here, record, pause, and stop. This next button actually changes the layout of the program, if you will. This one over here opens up the screen annotations. You can add shapes, layouts. When it comes to annotations, under shapes, and honestly, I've never used these before. You right click, you go to new shape, and then you can find an image to be used as a shape or just use a blank image and add your own text. And here's the how that looks like. You right click on it and you go to close and it's closed. That's pretty much what screen annotations are. And this one, this button over here changes changes the recording, you can record straight to SWF or AVI. And this button says requires X node stopwatch to enable auto pause functionalities. I don't know what that means, but let's go through the menus really quickly. File, record, stop, pause, explanatory. Under region, you can actually select the region you want to capture. So let's go to region, click this, and then you can click and drag. That simply selects the region, you let go and the recording stop starts. You can see it's flashing and it's giving you a bunch of information here. And then you can just click the stop button and then it's gonna ask you to save the actual uh, file. When it comes to fixed region, you type it in and then you click record. You select the part where you want that fixed region to be. You click and the recording starts as you can see. Again, stopping prompts you to name the file. Actually, in my case, it doesn't. Uh, there we go. There we go, That's that's the that's the recording. So I think the regions are self-explanatory for the most part. I'm gonna choose select screen and let's keep moving on. Options, we have video options. This is where we select the codec or the compressor, what we want to use. Basically, it's gonna affect the quality of the video the way you adjust it. The one that was the most popular back in the day was actually Lagarith lossless codec because again, it says it's lossless. As well as most people, used TechSmith's screen codec, which is actually from Camtasia Studio. So it's up to you. I just use this one. You can click configure. Each codec has its configurations. And there you go. You can choose the quality. And then you can also adjust the 
frame rate, I guess. You'll, you'll notice as I move this down here, it adjusts when the frame is captured and also the playback rate, which is the frames per second. You can also type it in manually if you want to, of course. I think it can go up until who knows how many. It probably could go 500. Let's test it out really quick. Oh, never mind. Uh-huh, so values must be multiplied. Well, let's see how much can we go. We can actually go to 1,000 frames per second. Insane. Well, well, let's test out 500 really quickly. So I click on the screen, and... Well, it seems to be capturing a bunch of frames. Look at that. Frames are just piling up. Let me quickly check the video and see if it actually recorded 500 frames. So here's the files media info, and you can see the actual frame rate is... 500 frames per second Insane, okay, let's get back to video options. I think this is for the most part self-explanatory if you just use auto adjust It's way easier to get your desired results. So just put it somewhere around here I'll use 40 just like that works just fine. Let's go to cursor options So this is where you choose to actually show the cursor and what to do with it So hide the cursor show the cursor you can use the custom cursor for example, whatever you desire pencil whatever we can also highlight the cursor, which is basically, as you can see, displays how it's going to look like, and you can move your cursor in there to actually see the size of it. So that's how it's going to look like. If I left-click or, or, or right-click, you'll see that colors change. That's because we also visual the program visualizes left button and the right button on your mouse clicks. There we go. Circle, ellipse, rectangle. You can choose the shape as well as the size. Let's click OK, move on to audio options. We can choose audio options for microphone, speakers, and also audio and video synchronization. For microphone, this is how it looks like. Choose your microphone, the format. You can click choose compressed format, and then you, for example, select MP3, and here's the quality you can choose there. I'm just gonna leave it as it is. Moving on, let's go to audio options for speakers. You can see it looks similarly. Select your speakers or headphones. Adjust the volume here. Audio and video sy synchronization. I think this is self-explanatory. You can actually time shift the audio. And that's about it. Moving on, we have options to record either from microphone or from the speakers or not record the audio at all. I'm going to use the microphone. Next, we have auto pan options. We can enable auto pan and also choose the auto pan speed. Now, in order to use auto pan, you need to use a regional capture or fixed region, for example. So just like this. 640 by 360. If I click, the recording starts, and you'll notice as I move my mouse that it's panning and it's following the mouse. The recording starts, and you'll notice as I move my mouse that it's panning. And there we go, you can see how that looks like. You can also go to auto pan speed and move it to 1, and pay attention what happens here. You'll... Yeah, you'll notice that it barely moves. And you can see how that gives us this nice, slowly panning effect. Doesn't look bad, but let's go to audio pan speed and move it all the way fully. And let's start the recording. So, now you'll notice how it's just jumping in blocks. There's an option to automatically stop the recording. For example, I want 30 seconds recording, it's gonna stop after 30 seconds. Now we have some program options, which I think they self-explanatory, and most of them are actually self-explanatory. What I like here is also if you hover over any of these, you'll see that it's actually explained in the status bar. A couple of options that I really like is you can choose what player is gonna play the recorded video, choose the directory, the recording thread priority, so if it's lagging for you, you can put it at higher, name of the AVI file, keyboard shortcuts, everything is there, a couple of extra options, and you also have record to flash options. When it comes to language, there's English and German. Moving on, we have tools, screen and video annotations. I think I already showed you these. One thing, video annotations, if you have a webcam, you can also open up the players. You can open up the SWF producer, which as you can see, it says it converts AVI to flash. Also, we have effects, some annotations, and you'll notice that we have watermark. So if I click there, it's going to get selected. And if I go to options, I can actually put an image path, I can actually choose a watermark. So I choose my logo, I can click options and I can also position it. And then I can do some changes here like brightness, the contrast. Under view we can actually change the basically the layout of the program which is the same button as here. I'll use fixed region and I'll also add my uh, logo. So let me do a recording. And it's, it's gonna also follow the mouse. I'm just gonna drag around a little bit. We can see the information. 
And uh, let's stop. I'm gonna let it play. And, and it's it's gonna also follow them. And as you can see, there's my logo in the bottom right corner. And also, by the way, since I did add a timestamp in the annotations, you can see add system timestamp. That's also visible there. So that's how that looks like. <laughs> Look at that. You can add your own logo like that. Okay, first impressions. Well, I can't really have first impressions. I had those like a long, long time ago. One thing that I do want to point out is that I don't remember that there was an option to select the screen. Maybe because I did not have multiple screens back in the day. Now that I have the option is there, I guess. But anyhow, let's move on to does it have luxury features and what are they? Well, first things first, the cursor itself. Not only can you highlight the cursor and the clicks, but you can also choose a custom cursor, which I haven't seen even in some of the premium programs. The program has automatically stopped recording, which I think is quite useful, and I do consider it luxury feature. Recording threat priority, in my opinion, is actually a luxury feature, because in case the program lags and you want to dedicate more resources to it so it doesn't lag, you can do that. The program has these screen annotations which I haven't really seen in a lot of programs and you can load shape libraries so you can be creative if you want to. In this segment let's test it in video editing software. So you can clearly see the logo and also the timestamp, let's play it. Second test, the recorder is gonna stop automatically after 30 seconds. I am playing some music in the background as you can... No background sound at all, so it's recording only the microphone. It says it's recorded in 40 frames per second. I will quickly take a look at media info. We do see that the frame rate is 40 frames per second. The reason I'm taking a look at this is because inside the program it was saying something like actual frame rate, what 12, 13. You will be able to see this very video in the sample video section, but I am noticing there, and also you can see the quality of a slight, just slight like, I guess that's because maybe it was actually recording the actual 13 frames per second. So just a tiny bit of lag in the preview. When I go to region, select fixed region, and then I click to record, it's sort of lagging until I left click to start the actual recording. Now everything starts to play smoothly again. You'll also see that it says actual input rate. 19 frames per second. So in the program it tells me there's an actual input rate, 19 frames per second, but once the video stops it does its little compressing thingy and then it plays you the video which is actually like 40 frames per second after conversion. So maybe it's actually upscaling the frame rate. I don't know if that's possible. There's an option to clearly select microphone and speakers but not both of them at the same time. When it comes to auto panning, the auto pan speeds are weird. If you go select it to low speed, it's barely following the mouse. If you select it to full speed, it's the movements are very blocky. If you're gonna add a watermark under options, there's no, there's nothing that tells you if you how to resize it and change it and position it manually. You only have a couple of set positions and that's about it. You have to manually resize your logo or whatever watermark you decide to add inside any image editing program. Inside audio options for microphone, if you're choosing a format like, for example, MP3, the only option that's given to you under attributes is 64 kilobits per second. Why is there nothing else? But if you actually go to PCM, then, then there is 44 kilohertz, 86 kilobits per second. So where are the other options? Higher quality, nothing. You do have screen annotations, but they seem fairly outdated. There ma maybe should be an option to be able to draw on the screen to do something, but not just add annotations like this. I don't, I don't know how are you going to use this at all. What are some good things I ran into? Well, first things first, you can record both monitors for such an old program. Actually, to have that is a little bit surprising. Overall, just the amount of options that you have with this program, not, not only all these options, but also the program options. You're tired of that flashing rectangle, turn it off, there's an option for that. Nowadays, how the trend is, you wouldn't have these options. In cursor, you can actually choose a custom cursor, like pencil or like a finger. There's an option to automatically stop the recording at set time, and that's phenomenal for me because I need to record exactly 30 seconds video sample. If the program is lagging, you could change the thread priority to allocate more sources of the computer to the program itself, so you maybe stop the lag. Okay, let me show you the sample video with some additional information. So, here I am recording a uh, desktop 30 seconds and I'm playing some music so let's just test it out. I'm gonna do a couple of left clicks and now a couple of right clicks. 
it's telling me that the actual input rate is 13 frames per second. So is it actually recording only 13 frames per second? And maybe it's uh, just up, up, up framing it? I don't know, but let's see how the video looks like. Finally, let's have a final checklist. Here's my must-have features for free desktop recording programs. Let's see what features this program has. 30 frames per second, check. It can go up until 1000, supposedly? Insane. When it comes to frame size, 1080p, well, you can record both monitors, so I'm sure it can go up more than 1080p. Watermark. Now, this is... There's no watermark, but you can put your own. So, I'll, I'm gonna give two, two points here. There is no time limit at all. However, you cannot record both desktop and microphone sounds at the same time. Record microphone into a separate audio track is also not there. You can record your mouse, and it also has additional settings, which is just great. Can it record a webcam? Well, I actually skipped this one because I don't have any, but if you go to tools, video annotations, you can actually select a device and it's gonna, see, I don't have a webcam. It's gonna show the webcam on the screen, but yes, it can. Is there a pause button? Yes, there is. Save to common video and audio formats. Well, it can save to AVI. Also, it can record to SWF, but that's about it. I did use partially in my previous videos, but if I did, just consider it as an X from now on. So partially is an X, since I do think that the program should be able to save to all of these common video and audio formats. So once again, if I did write partially, that just means X as well. And final summary and a review. Well, this program is very basic. It certainly can get you through the recording, especially if you're looking to record those notepad music video tutorials. We can hear you typing, idiot! This program was, I think, one of the first ones to be used by a majority of people, and it was actually quite good back in the day. How does it hold up today? Well, well, surprisingly, it's still a capable program. I just think it needs some extra options, but honestly, the program is not that bad. It has some features that even the premium programs don't have. Overall, it's a very solid program. With all the tools, options, customizations you have here to adjust it the way you want it to, there's nothing really that goes against common sense. The only thing that, however, does a raise a little bit of the concern is the malicious controversy that supposedly this program was bundled with. Hopefully, that's resolved by now. But what's my final grade? And should you use this program? Will I use it? Well, I'm not going to tell you in the video. Instead, you can check out the spreadsheet that's linked in the comments also in the description where you can open it up and see all the reviews that I have going on as well as my plan for the future programs that I'm going to review and you can see all the final grades that I have given to these programs. So check it out if you want to and that's going to be it. It was actually a blast taking a look at this program once again. Anyhow, that's it guys. Take it as you will. Thanks so much for tuning into this video. Consider rating the video and subscribing if you want to follow up this series and the future episodes that I release on this channel. And that's it. Thank you. And I will see you in future videos. Pretty stuff. Always do it on my own, so I gotta get through it. And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing. Never give up, never slow till I finally prove it. Never listen to the no's, I just wanna keep moving. Keep my head up when I act. Head up, that's a fact. Never looking back, I'ma keep.